<laughs> hey. And we're back. Dog Life Radio, episode 26. I am your host, Rossi Gugio. Welcome, welcome, all are welcome. And I mean that. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I appreciate every one of my listeners, no matter where you are from. Uh, special shout out to my new listeners out in Sweden. Hello. I don't know how to say hello in Swedish. So, you know, howdy. What's going on? Uh, I'm glad you're here. Hope you enjoy. So now today, what do we have on tap today? We have got a look into the world of mixed martial arts. My buddy Matt Hogan drops by and we talk, we discourse, we debate, we bro science a bit of the world of MMA. What's going on mostly with the UFC? I know, but whatever. Uh, Deal with it. And uh, we talk about pay-per-view prices. Are they too high? No shit. Yes, they are. But then we also dip and dive around some of the other big issues that are happening with the UFC and the MMA overall. Also, does anybody remember UFC 60? Here's a little bit of foreshadowing. I do. And I enjoyed it. (laughs) All right. Uh, So as I mentioned previously, we've got some new things coming up for the show. One of those is some new music. We've got G-Mac and Trust Dollars with Money Right Now. You're going to be hearing them on the show today. And if you enjoy the sample that you do hear, I encourage you, I highly encourage you, check them out on YouTube, SoundCloud, and you can find G-Mac on Instagram as well. That is G-Mac and Trust Dollars with Money Right Now. Now, I also wanted to take a quick momentito to talk about my friends down south in Tennessee with a fantastic pixie dusting body product called Soar No More Muscle Rub. I know, I know, you've probably said, man, you know, I lift, I, I, I'm all about the health, fitness, and overall wellness, but I get achy. I know I'm achy. It happens. I'm getting a little older and, you know, my, my back, my leg and stuff, it's, it's a bit sore. Well, check this out. Soar No More Muscle Rub is an all-natural muscle relief rub made with essential oils that target muscle aches and soothes your discomfort, no matter how small or large. Each product is made to order. Now, I use this, and because I use it, you should use it too, right? Of course. Check them out. OnTheGoMassageTherapy.com OnTheGoMassageTherapy on Facebook. Great product. Check it out, people. I need my cash right now. Give me my money right now. I need my cash right now. Please, give me my money right now. I need my cash right now. Give me my money right now. Please, I need my cash right now. Give me my money right now. I need my cash right now. Give me my money right now. I need my cash right now. Please, give me my money right now. I need my cash right now. Give me my money right now. Please, I need my cash right now. I need a bag right now. Let me do math right now. Fuck it with you, I'm 200 down. Now I'm back up like 200 down. That was G-Mac and Trust Dollars. Thank you, boys. Um, If you like what you heard, you know where you can find them. Check out the full video on YouTube. Now, I've always been a proponent, a believer, supporter of coffee. Life is way too short for bad coffee. So you will not see me drinking bad coffee. I'm not going to drop names, but... (laughs) you can imagine Um, I want to take this time to announce the newest sponsor friend of the podcast Death Wish Coffee Uh, they are legit loving their stuff strongest coffee on the market but it is not all about the high caffeine content this coffee is really good I have had both of their blends Um, they sink a lot of time into sampling and researching the beans that they actually use for the Death Wish blend and their Valhalla Java or Odin Forced Roasts. Both of them are excellent. One is lighter. That's the Valhalla Java. It's a little bit lighter blend. And then you've got a dark roast, which is the Death Wish. Uh, that one has the higher caffeine of the two, but both of them will blow the doors off of anything you get at your local round pastry shops or any of your Seattle-based uh <laughs> place that you're going to get your coffee. They'll, they'll knock it out of the park. All right, and everything that they have is fully organic certified and fair trade. So 
show them some love. Hit them up at deathwishcoffee.com. Uh, you can get their brews at a variety of distributors. Check them out again, deathwishcoffee.com. And uh, I think we've got a word from our sponsors as well. Whoa, how did we get on this podcast? Uh, I'm not sure, but I like it here. It's pretty great, but we should probably tell everyone about our own podcast, Fueled by Deathcast. Hell yeah. Comes out every Thursday from the Death Wish Coffee Company, the world's strongest coffee. Every week, you can hear me, the incredible Jeff. And me, the amazing D-Man. And we talk about new science discoveries, breaking news from Death Wish Coffee, and we welcome a special guest from rock stars to astronauts and ask them all the question, what fuels you the podcast is available right on deathwishcoffee.com and wherever podcasts are found including itunes google music stitcher and more plus you can now watch it live on the Deathwish coffee company page on facebook and watch all our videos over on youtube all right all right now you know all about fueled by deathcast and how you can listen to it but first let's finish this podcast let's get back to the show hey thanks for supporting the show Remember to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, all at Dog Life Radio. Help me spread the good word, too, so share the links on whatever social media you prefer. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or follow it on Podbean, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, or wherever you're listening. So throw up a four-star or four-cloud or whatever. Thank you very much. It's the best way to help others find the podcast. And as always, send me any feedback. I would love to hear from you. Dogliferadio at yahoo.com. On with the show. The tape is rolling. Um, this is Dog Life Radio, and I am your host, Ross and Giugio. I'm here with special, well, not so special, but I'm here with a guest, uh, Matthew Hogan. Thank you. Uh, hello, welcome. hello. Welcome, welcome. So uh, today, Matt and I wanted to chit chat a bit about the state of the union of mixed martial arts mma a um, couple of different pieces we wanted to talk about we've been thinking a lot about um i've been thinking a lot about the prices just because i remember i think one of the first pay-per-views that i ever saw i think when i first really started to get excuse me into watching was at your house it was um shit i think it was the, the Hoist Gracie and Matt Hughes fight. Mm. I think that was the first one. That was a good one. That was really good. Um, Hoist was a little old, too old to be there. He was old then. Yeah. Um, now, but the thing of it is, is um, I don't remember. How, do you remember how much that one was? Mm. Had to be forty to forty-five bucks, something like that. Forty-nine, maybe. Be, be, could have been. Could have been. Call it fifty. That was back in two thousand six. Um, I, I thought there would be no math on this exam. And this is uh, 2018, so eight minus six, uh, 12 years, 12 years ago. Um, so 50 bucks just recently, I think within the past month or so, they jacked it up to 65 bucks for a pay per view. Um, the big swirl surrounding that stuff is really the quality of those cards versus. Um, the amount of money you're paying for it. I mean, you look back on that one there that we were talking about, the Hughes and Gracie. You had some of them, I mean, you had a serious lineup. Like there's I mean, Hughes was dominant for a ever? long time, yeah. <laughs> you had Hughes, you had um, Rich... Uh, Franklin. Franklin. Ace. You had Chuck Liddell. Yeah, you were still in that early, that early era. Those were all, re well, with the exception of Franklin, they were wrestlers, not Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Oh, yeah. They were definitely early in that space where they didn't necessarily have that well-rounded stuff coming at you. I mean, so l l listen to this. This is the card. That card, that night, the prelims, Melvin Gillard against Rick Davis. Gabriel Gonzaga fights Fabiano Scherner. Uh, Spencer Fisher against Matt Wyman. I think that was handsome Matt Wyman. Jeremy Horn against defeats Chael Sonnen. Sonnen. Oh, God. Yeah. Then on the main card, you've got Mike Swick and Joe Riggs. Brandon Vera. Quick, quick Swick. Quick Swick. Uh, when he was at middleweight. Uh, Brandon Vera when he was at heavyweight against Asorio Silva. 
Then you had welterweight Diego Sanchez against John Alessio. Uh, the co-main event was Dean Lister against Alessio Sakara. And then the main, the main, uh, uh, the main event was Matt Hughes and Hoist Gracie. I mean, that's a ridiculously stacked card. Twelve? What did you say? Twelve years ago? Was it twelve? Yes. Twelve years ago. How many of those names, even all the way down to the very entry p- prelim card, Melvin Gillard? I mean, he's a known fighter. He's an exciting guy to watch. Awesome fighter. You got Gabriel Gonzaga, who went on to be, as many people would probably say, a perennial gatekeeper uh, up at the heavyweights. Had a pretty good career with the UFC, a good stint. Spencer Fisher, Matt Wyman, Horn, Chael, Squick, Riggs, all these names. These are all big names for 50 bucks back then. I mean, yeah. you're talking about a serious serious um, uh, uh, card here. And as I look at the card, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, I can count to nine by myself. Nine out of those nine fights, you only had one decision, and that was Diego uh, Diego Sanchez. Everything else was finishes, um, and it was a, a mix of KOs, TKOs, and submits. So I mean, definitely a different era. But I mean, just from a price point, that was worth every friggin' penny. And I know it was for me because that was the tipping point. After that, we were getting the fights every every month. We were getting the. Um, the big pay per view from there. Yeah, I remember watching. We got everyone like uh, Tim Sylvia went on a tear as a heavyweight. Remember what we watched him fight for uh, a, yeah. a while, winning. Uh, I remember when he fought um, Jeff Munson. Uh, remember that was in your basement. Yeah, I was, I was so pissed because I was a Munson fan, but uh, that was not not a good fight for Jeff. It was uh, definitely no. Uh, it was not no. That was not. I think he got one round of that whole. That five round affair, but but yeah, sixty five bucks. So sixty five bucks, and in comparison, you've got tonight the pay per view of what is this one? Would you say sixty? That was UFC sixty. That we saw. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Uh, no, tonight is two twenty one. So obviously a great deal later. But I mean, you're talking about um, pay per view card. With Rockhold and Romero as the headliner. I mean, you got a couple of good names on this one, but I mean, and what's the price? The pr- sixty-five bucks. Yeah. You can pay sixty-five bucks to, to watch. I mean, I love Romero and Rockhold. Who's I got two thumbs thumb. and won't be watching that fight? <laughs> uh, this, this guy. This guy. I don't think I'll be staying up quite that late to watch that guy. Yeah, that's another good me. point. But, but point. So I would have to say that the cards have still not since 60 still have not disappointed they've been they still do good fight matches and set up good um good undercards and and overall cards even when somebody misses or can't fight or gets injured in in the training even the fill-ins are good matchups see i i agree in the sense that i think that they still do put together good cards the part that's that people get whiny about is they're saying the quality of the card isn't the same because they're doing more fights. They're doing this fight, this pay-per-view here. They've got the FS1 fight coming up next week. They've got another, uh, you know, a fight night card coming up the week after that. So many more fights is diluting the cards. But I go to the flip on it and say, you know, U- UFC MMA in general is trying to become, I don't know if they are or not, but they're try, they want to become a mainstream major sports franchise. They're the fastest growing sports franchise, but you know, blown away hockey, basketball. They want those dollars. And, but if you think about it and compare them to NFL, on any given Sunday, you know, you've got whatever, you know, 10, 10, 15 games, whatever amount of games going on. How many of them are stinkers? <laughs> Seriously, who's going to watch friggin' Cleveland play San Diego? Who, nobody's going to watch that stuff, even if you're in San Diego. But I mean, Cleveland fans will. Okay, oh, shut up. But, <laughs> so, but my point is, you still will watch it. You'll still see some good football. It's just like seeing these fight night cards where you've got, you know, like a couple of big names like Cowboy Cerrone's fighting up, coming up soon. Um, you're going to watch it, but it's not like the Super Bowl, this extravaganza kind of a thing. I think they're good cards. You're just getting so much more of it. And with more comes, you're going to get the spectrum of events. So, just like any sport, you have fans of the sport that understand the nuances of it. Yes. 
and you have people who just want to see a collision. Yeah, they just want to see a slobber knocker. Yep. Jim Ross. Yeah. The, whether it's football, baseball, uh, hockey, or boxing, or MMA. They just want to see even even racing, right? They just they're there because they think a car is going to fly into the stands. Yeah. So that's yeah. why some there's just some fans that will be, but the ones that understand the nuance of it, or enjoy the nuance of it, but can under can appreciate the back and forth that happens when there's grappling involved. When you yep. get on the mat. The, the jockeying for position, the resting, the attempts at, at submission holds, the attempts to escape when you get... It, it's boring to the, the people that are there for the slobber knocker, mm -hmm. but it's it's exciting when you, when you start to understand it, learn more about it. Okay, so I agree. Now, if you're trying to recruit more... there's Okay, so would you agree that there are more people in the category that don't necessarily understand all of the nuances of all the aspects of MMA. It's a smaller group of people that can really truly appreciate all of the different skill sets and the technical aspects of it. Would you agree that that's a smaller piece? Yes. Okay. So, if you're the UFC or, you know, um, Bellator or whomever, you have this small core group that are, they're going to be uh, hashtagging would watch tonight's one because they're diehards. You know, they're going to watch it. They're going to go to a bar and watch it, whatever. You want to get more people going to the bar or more people buying the card. So to do that, to get them to appreciate these you things. You slobber knockers. Yeah, well, slobber knockers, or do you not jack the fucking price up to 65 bucks? Because you're like, hey, I've heard of these guys. I think I want to watch yeah, it. How much how is it? Yeah, but how do you keep the talent? So, I, I, you know, the, the, the pool so you of took, money. You, you, you took away their ability to, to get sponsors. Yeah. By forcing uniforms. Yep, the Reebok deal. You, I, I believe the EA Sports game mm -hmm. is controlled by the UFC, not the individuals signing up with EA Sports to be in the game. So there's revenue sharing with each fighter that's in the game, but they don't they don't negotiate their own deal. I don't believe. Yep. So now you've. Reduce their ability to make money, to promote themselves in that aspect. But but if you think about the entire pie of um, money, of revenue that's coming in for the UFC, there's been different statistics around um, from 7% to like 15% of the revenue goes to the fighters. So even if we use the high end, I'll even go to 20%. Say 20% of all the revenue goes to fighter salaries and fighter bonuses. and fight. So 80% is going to the UFC. Keeping the talent to me is not about jacking 25. It's not about jacking the price 15 bucks a month. To me, it's, you know, and it's easy for me to say because it's not my money. Take a slice out of that 80% and you're going to retain your talent. Don't jack up the prices. Can't You should have fucking went the other way. You should have dropped it. Drop it to forty bucks. You're going to get more people willing to spend, you know, forty bucks or thirty bucks on a pay per view versus sixty five freaking dollars. Or I'm a diehard. I ain't paying freaking sixty five bucks to watch Romero who misses weight <laughs> against Rockhold. And we'll talk or about keep, missing keep weight. Keep it at keep it at sixty five, but do fewer pay per views. Oh, Have okay. more on FS1, more prime time fights. Okay, so there's a, there's a good one because if it's free on TV. You gonna watch the fights? Yes. Hell yes. Hell yes. And then yes. you get more ad dollars. Absolutely. You've got a bunch. And of it's more mainstream because now you're gonna have more people just happen upon it. Yeah. Oh, I agree. And then, so the way that I look at it is, you can take a look at this the the, the talent, the uh, the roster on the UFC. The roster the UFC has has four levels of talent, in my opinion. In my humble opinion, four levels. One is Conor McGregor level. Right now, Connor's still on the roster. He is the only one in that category. You could argue that Ronda Rousey and potentially even a Brock Lesnar was there. They're not they're not on the roster, so they're not there. It's Con, one person. The next level down, I've got in uh, in this space is all of your um, known commodities. 
Um, these are your people like John Jones. These are your people who've got belts now like Stipe Miocic. These are, you know, uh, Rose Namajunas, you know. Uh, um, Joanna Jojicic. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, jo- Joanna Champion. I think she's still there. You've got n- notable talent. They're not, they're not even close to the Connor level, but these are good, talented people. They've got skill set or they've got... Um, They've just got that something special charisma, charisma. But you know what? That's the other thing too, right? This is more of an international arena. True. And I think in the, today's day and age, it's in this country, it's harder to get buy-in when some of your top talent, some of the most exciting fighters, can't communicate after they win the fight. Oh, can't communicate with you right. after the fight. That's a, no. That that's. That is a, uh, that's definitely something. We've got that with Stipe. Stipe speaks perfectly fine English. It's just he's not a very articulate man. And that could potentially bite him. I mean, he's just ripped off the most wins in heavyweight history, defending the belt. Arguably the greatest heavyweight of all time. Um, legit argument there. And yet he's still not this mainstay into that Conor McGregor level. He isn't. So you've got all of those folks you got the next level down of people who potentially have the skill to move up a level and maybe not the personality, or they've got the personality and the character, but they don't have the skills. And then you've got a bottom tier of people that just, you know, they probably are not ready either way to be in the UFC. Now, the marketing machine of trying to get people there, and this, I'm going to tie it back to those free fights. You use these pieces, these free fights, to groom the talent to get them up into the upper ranks. And you know what else I do if I'm in the UFC, since you asked me, is I buy some of these local market regional, um, uh, local market regional fights, fight organizations. So that's my AAA. Um, everything they do on UFC, uh, the the app, their app they have, yep, should also be on TV because there's actually some good fights on there oh, and the, some uh, good. There's the some fight good, pass. The fight pass. So yeah, there's, yeah, there's good, good um, competitions. Mm-hmm. There's some. Uh, Naga competitions on there. Yep. There's, um, which Naga, for people who might listen to this that don't know, is a uh, grappling. North American Grappler Association. <clears throat> Happened so to those. have won a samurai sword in the Northeast uh, quite a few years ago. Yes. Just around that out. When you wore a younger man's clothes. <laughs> when I wore a younger man's clothes. I got that sword downstairs someplace. Um,. So that, that's another avenue. Yeah. But then you also have millennials that don't have cable. Well, see, that's the thing. The Fox deal is coming up. What's going to happen? Are they going to jump ship and go to another cable network, a different provider? I think it might be too soon to go strictly um, app and streaming. It might be. Who, what do I know? I don't know. I don't know. I think they should be doing these pay-per-views either cheaper or I like your point of... I think cheaper and less frequent. More free gets more people watching. Those things, you get that going. It gets your ball, the ball rolling. More people watching, more people buy your pay-per-views. It's just the way it if is. You go, if you lose your, your TV and you go to an app, mm-hmm. it's $10, I think, for the app. For uh, 10 bucks a month for the Fight yep. Pass? Do you have it? I do. No kidding? Yeah. It's 10 bucks a month for the Fight Pass. And you should give your pay-per-views to Fight Pass subscribers at a, at a discount. Oh, absolutely. Shit, yes. Totally agree. But. That's all I got to say. That's all you got to say. Well, I just, you know, I'm not buying these cards for 65 bucks a pop on them. It's not. Maybe I, I didn't go- even buy uh, Conor McGregor. The McGregor and... Mayweather, Mayweather. Yeah. No, that was like $100. $100? You out of your enough. freaking mind. $100. Craziness. I learned my lesson back when Tyson oh, Jesus either Christ. beat the shit out of somebody in 90 seconds or uh, got embarrassed in two rounds. That was uh, when you wore a younger man's clothes as well. Yes. Um, I, t- I, I tell you what. The, um, the, the I go back to the pay-per-view that's going on tonight. This is going to be, there's going to be some good fights, but people are not going to watch it. Mm-hmm. But I'll watch the undercard. Oh, the, on, uh, live on uh, blah, blah, blah. 
FS1. Is it FS1? Mm-hmm. Man, what are they going to do? I won't watch the Olympics. Yeah, I'm outside of that. Olympics suck. Yeah. No, I'm good. I'm good. The undercard you've got. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I know, I know a handful of those fighters. But yeah, I'd watch it just because it's free. That's the whole point. Yep. So, okay, so Romero misses weight. Yes. He missed weight. So not yeah. only this fight was supposed to be Luke Rockhold against um, Bobby Knuckles or uh, <laughs> Robert Whitaker, yeah. um, the, uh, the interim quasi-champ, whatever. I, I don't know. The middleweight division's a, a, kind of a fuck mess. But um, <laughs> it is. Um, so it's supposed to be is that. that a technical term? Th- that is a, uh, that's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu term called a fuck mess. Um, so Whitaker goes down with a bad, I mean, a, a legit serious injury. He's got like, he had chicken pox. He had all kinds of stuff going on. Although, since he is an adult, I don't know if you call it um, shingles or whatever. Anyway, he's out. Um, Romero steps in. I like the fight. Romero, Rockhold, number one, number two. It's awesome. Romero comes in and misses weight badly, in my opinion. I mean, he's got, it's a 185 weight class. so he's Three got pounds. Get, well, you, you get one pound. So, you know, he comes in at 188, gets down to 187.7. Oh man! So now it's not for the now it's not for the uh, for the belt. So three three pounds is uh, distracted by the dogs having their own UFC fight right now. Well, that's why it's called Dog Life Radio. There are three dogs going nuts here. <laughs> um, so the 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 fight for three pounds. It's not like like wrestling. Where collegiate wrestling, where you have to cut, I, uh, and these guys go walk around, right? Yes, you they take walk. somebody like um, GSP. Yes, sir. so he walks around at what does he eat? Cuts for one seventy. <sighs> he he used to be a one seventy, so but he walks around at one eighty five, one ninety. He was much bigger. He probably walked around one ninety five. So you cut weight. Yep. That's not healthy. No. You run the risk of losing the fight because you're so out of energy because you cut so hard. Mm-hmm. But then when you go into fight, you, you, you gain back I don't know, 10, 15 pounds. Or what, yeah, it's like you, you get yourself into physical condition. And like you said, you're walking around. Rule, general rule was general rule is like you're coming into your fight about 10, 10 pounds, maybe 15 pounds above your weight class. And you end up cutting down all that water weight the last week of camp. Right, and then you gain it back. To your point, yeah, ridiculously unhealthy. So Romero's not the only guy who's doing. It. I mean, who missed? But if you're a natural, so 160, 170. Yeah. Oh, and you come in and completely you're hydrated. In hydrated, you're yeah. fine, and you're fighting somebody who's cutting weight. When yep. you go to fight them, the whole point of being overweight is is useless anyways. Because now I'm back at 180, 185. Yeah, well, you, they, you've got the concept of... And that's of, a serious difference in a fight. Well, yeah, if you, you're weighing in the day before, you, you make 185, you weigh yourself when you walk in the cage. One guy's walking in at 200 pounds, you know, somebody could be you know, north of whatever. No, you're absolutely right. It's all it's semantic at that point. It's like who can right. cut the most weight as opposed to we're going to fight at an agreed upon weight that we both actually weigh. Like right. Donald Cerrone was a guy who was cutting weight all the time to 155. Then he, he just, you know, had, had a string of bad luck. You get older, you can't cut as well. He moves up to 170 and he's got to have a really good run here. Uh, Dos RDA, Dos Andros is doing the same thing. Historically, a 155er up to 170. Um, it, it's weird, uh, not weird, um, it's more and more common where you're seeing that because sometimes it's happening with fighters who are getting you know, a little bit older and it's a little harder to make the weight cuts and everything like that. But um, I agree. I think it's got, a huge, it's got a huge upside to it. I think California's athletic commission was looking at weight cutting in general and they were putting in something to the effect of they were doing... You get you, you get your uh, weighed the day before, but then you get a weighed before you get into the ring in an effort to try to get people to fight at their natural weights. Like, what do you naturally walk around at? Like, Romero and, and Rockhold. Three holder, pounds yeah. is not 
does not give one person the advantage over the other. No, but it's the it's the fact that Romero had to cut down so far and he couldn't get that last couple of pounds. Um, it's what he's going to bounce back to is the piece. What, what's his name? Um, Khabib Nurmagomedov. He when he was trying to cut the last couple of times, his liver and kidneys were shutting down. Get rushed to the hospital. You got all these stories of people passing out like on the scales and shit. It's crazy. It's too much. So it's. Then I ask you, what do you do? Do you put in more weight classes to kind of get people to fight at that regular? No, you put in guidelines in between the weights. Guidelines. So like, you can be within ten pounds, five pounds. So it's the one eighty five weight class now, and you get a one pound swing now. Right. You're suggesting make you it either bigger? come in at one eighty or one eighty uh, or one ninety. Mm -hmm. Ten pounds. Under, but you, over. don't you still have the whole thing where, if, so then if you just raise the limit to 190, wouldn't you have the same issue where somebody would just go, up okay, now well, I... No, you can't cut weight anymore. If you're so how do you make, weight, not, how do you, how do you make sure they're not cutting weight? I've heard of different people doing different kinds of hydration tests. Like, I, I don't know if it's fucking blood work or you, if you test your urine or something like that to test how, how hydrated your body is. Yeah. That type of a thing is, you know, whatever that, that method is, to me, like, if you've got those ranges, whatever they may be, and you have a way to make sure that people aren't doing the cutting, like doing a weighing before you get into the ring, that's another thing that's a concept that's been kicked around too. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just know it's not healthy. I know that jockeys, the yeah, cut weight, ultimately end up Losing their teeth because their gums recede. Yeah, they do a lot of induced vomiting or just Jesus Christ, just not not healthy. I mean, geez, remember Vision Quest? <laughs> I do, I do. He for he those came, who don't know what that is. Oh, could you Vision please? Quest was a movie in the eighties with Matthew Modine where he was a wrestler and his goal. Wow, was, you pulled out the name. That's impressive. <laughs> his goal was to um, fight. The state champion uh, shoot, yeah. Was his name shoot? It, I, think. I think so. And to do that, he had to played by a young James Earl Jones, I think. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. Okay, no, not James Earl. Jones. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, I just he uh, he had to cut weight in order to be able to fight him, and he he cut so much weight that he started. He was anemic, and he was. Bleeding during the fight. Yep, and, and that's a real issue that that wrestlers and fighters that cut weight have, and it's just not good for your body. No, absolutely correct. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I cannot find who actually played. I do know Madonna was in that movie. Madonna was in that movie. Yeah, as was uh, uh, Bacon. Bacon. Uh, Kevin Bacon's brother. <laughs> ah, the lesser, no, Bacon. He was in, uh, or no, Matt Dillon's brother. Oh, Kevin Dillon? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. No, Forrest Whitaker was also in that, but nonetheless. Yes. I was thinking it was, uh, God damn it, I can't think of the other guy's name. Anyway, but no, your point, okay, so yeah, that was a famous uh, wrestler movie, I remember that. Yes. I think pretty much anybody in our age group which Should is, it. you know, in the 25 to 32 range, um, would remember that that movie. Especially those of us who wrestled in high school or college, whatever. That was the movie you kind of called upon. Um, I think that's when, uh, was it some Red Riders Lunatic Fringe? Yeah. Yeah. I do remember that. Anyway, yeah, the weight cutting is, is a major issue. I think in order to get... To the next level, I think that act, that act. Mark Hunt is fighting. Yeah, Mark Hunt's fighting um, Curtis Razor Blades. Mark Hunt, a man who's not had any problem with cutting weight. Because he's a heavyweight. Yes, he's a heavyweight. I think he's about five foot ten uh, as well. He's a, he's a, you know, he's a Samoan. You know, motherfucker Samoan. What are you gonna do about it? Not his fault. <laughs> he's, but uh, I think they need to address that. That needs to kind of. That needs to come to fruition. You can't have your main fight, you know, these cards falling apart at the last minute because people missing weight. And I know everybody always compares it to boxing. Boxing doesn't do it because boxing's got a fucking weight class every three and a half pounds. 
That's why you can have 12 belts and be the same one person. I mean, uh, Floyd had, had belts in multiple classes because he, you know, there's one 145, 148, 152, 157. It's like, are you fucking kidding? That's just too much. I don't want to see that stuff. You're starting to see that a little bit now in some of the lighter classes in the UFC where, you know, uh, 45 and 55, 10-pound difference, Connor gets both belts. Okay, so he loses one of them probably. Yeah, but that's – so that you can't maintain though, right? Connor's 160-something regular. 168, I think. Yeah, he, and yeah. he was sucking down to 145. Yeah, that was not. No, but I think going he, to 155 is a good. Yeah, it's closer to his. I think he wanted to go up to 170. Yeah, you know, I, I think. Um, I, I think right now, who knows where his head's at right now? Who knows? I don't even want to go there. But I think a ten with a ten pound, ten pound increments, that's where you're starting to see a bit more of it. Amanda Nunez is fighting. Or was supposed to be fighting Cyborg. That that I think that's still in conversation. Cyborg well, is Cyborg just beat Holly Holm, didn't she? Yes, in a good fight. Now it's Cyborg a submission, right? No, I think it was a wasn't it? TKO. I thought it was a submission. Jesus, I don't know. It was Sixty five dollars. I ain't fucking pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I know Cyborg just signed a fight. Um, uh, uh, a Russian lady from um, she's a one forty five or a one thirty five pound fighting the one forty five pound. Uh, she fights for Invicta. I can't pronounce her last name, and I'm not going to try to to do it because it'll Did just cover it. cover. Yeah, something something along those lines. Um, but <laughs> nonetheless, you're seeing a lot more of that jumping around in weight classes because you see that ten pound di- ten pound differences. That's just my opinion. Since you asked, hmm. it was a unanimous decision. That's what I thought. Cyborg beats home via decision. Um, uh, for most, more more cards than not, it was a uh, forty-eight, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-seven, and then there was one at forty-nine, forty-six. So uh, from from everything that I heard, I did not see the fight. All I of the things I listened to, either. it was a good fight. The decision, you know, it, Cyborg did win. It was close. There was some, you know, uh, there was enough where people, you know, if you do have a rematch type of a thing, I think people would definitely watch it again. Um, I think there was a, a big concern about, not a big concern, but a big um, aha, <clears throat> where Holly actually got uh, Cyborg up against a cage a number of times and probably didn't expect to keep her there because Cyborg's so friggin' strong and didn't really acknowledge or know what to do she knows what to do but she just didn't act on it she may have been uh, game planning a certain scenario where she's not pinning cyborg up against the fence and maybe that played into things i don't know but home is one of those people as well she's bouncing back and forth between 45 and 35 i want to see her fight more at 35 for the belt or you know what have her fight cyborg two or three more times in a row because there's nobody else in the fucking division at 45 (laughs) Um, well, Rousey's gone, right? She's, she's UFC, the, uh, WWE, now. or yeah, WWE, and um, yeah, she she did a Carano. Yeah, yes, yeah, she did. She did. Nunez was her cyborg. Yeah. People forget about Carano being, you know, because Rousey, you know, I mean, you can't argue with her her um, popularity. I mean, she was ridiculously popular. She was a huge draw on pay per view. Very talented, um, you know. In hindsight, yeah, but you, you start getting off into other things in your life, and then it's what are you doing? What are you fighting for? Right, because there's somebody who's hungrier, who's not talking to all these movie execs, right. who's not got a, a crowd of yes women and yes men around you, right. who says you know you're the best striker on the planet. Um, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, not even close. I'm not picking on, not, not going back and saying Rousey was one dimensional, maybe two dimensional, uh, grappling. And, you know, she was pretty damn good on the ground where she could, she can nail you with that arm bar. So I'm going to give her that. I'm not going to say she's like, a goes black back belt. to, uh, Franklin Hughes, um, and Liddell. These fighters did not have depth. So, Franklin, when you get somebody like Silva come in, who has... That's a tough one to say, Frank. I don't... I, I'd agree Anderson with... Anderson Silva was a better fighter, a different fighter than Franklin. Right, but that doesn't mean that Franklin's not well-rounded. 
I think Franklin was more well-rounded than um, than the others, and I think Liddell had Liddell had chop, wrestling chops. Right. You didn't but see he was a lot a striker. of it. He, he was a sprawl and brawl fighter. Right. Where and Hughes was a take you down and smack you around kind of. Oh, he's a ground and pound fighter. Right. Absolutely, he was not a stand up guy. So yeah, I get that. But both of those guys, you know, just you you the the, the game changes. It definitely changed and on their you watches. You either change with it or you get out not, of the I, way. I don't think you change with it when you're that old. Not that they were old, but they were at that point in their career. Hughes was the greatest welterweight of all time when he ran into the greatest welterweight of all time in George St. Pierre. Right. Then and then uh Liddell, um Jesus, Liddell ran into I think he just ran into Quentin Jackson. I think Rampage came over and beat him. And then honestly I think But it, even even Rampage is the same type of fighter. Oh, he was, a, yeah, I think just Page, I think Page just caught him. And, you know, who knows? I'm not going to argue if Page is better than Liddell. But I think at that point in the but light heavyweight division. Who's the title now in that? D, uh, DC's got it. Daniel Cormier. Right. But it's just because Jones failed the test and, you know, this whole thing, he'll come back and who, who knows what's going to happen there. I don't think, I think John Jones is that George St. Pierre is that Anderson Silva type of. Well, you know, that next level fighter. Um, Anderson Silva, talk about popping. He popped hot again. Uh, I mean, t- the, it's the, the steroid era of, uh, of the, the game. But nonetheless, Jones, I think, is that guy at light heavyweight. Without Jones, it's just like, it's like I don't want to say barren, but it's a little bit light at that division. It's a tough one to... But you look at... at, at um... Jose. Aldo? Yeah. Yeah. And Connor. Connor's a different style fighter than what Jose was used to. You know what? I'm going to. And go. different, a completely different game plan. You know, to, uh, get in his head, talk shit, get him riled up, get him off his game. But also, he's not a traditional grappler, not a traditional wrestler. Mm-hmm. He's a kickboxer. So it's it's a it's a mismatch of styles. I also think Jose Jose was also in his post Usada Jose drug testing. Once Usada came in, once Navinsky came in, I think you saw a distinctly different Jose Aldo. Yeah, I'm throwing it out there. I mean, he you, still was undefeated for what, ten years. Oh yeah, you can't take anything away. He was a phenomenal fighter, all of that, all, and then all, I'm not saying even if he was used to the tits, who knows? Conor probably still, you know, dice him. It was that point at that time. That's what happened. But I'm just throwing it out there. That's what happened. There's a number of fighters that went through that whole compare the way they look before Usada and then after, and Jose don't look the same. Granted, he definitely was much older and had a lot of miles in terms of fights on him, so that could be part of it as well. But uh, he was juicing, so you know. <laughs> uh, you know, same with Hoyce when he came up against um, Hughes. Hughes, yeah, that was different style fighter. Oh, completely. That was that was like so the the game changes chapters on your watch, and you you can't, won't, or don't change with it. Hoist, that was beyond. That the game changed three times, and then he came back. That was, you know, a novelty fight. But your your statement's valid. The day, the game does change, and it's changing very fast in um in 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 today's day. I mean, you're seeing it change. I think in the lower weight classes, you're seeing it evolve more quickly than I think in some of the heavier ones, like in the two hundred five and in the um, so having the heavyweights being heavier now than I used to be. Yes. Having grappled. Yes, you have. It is a lot of energy <laughs> yes. to grapple when you're a heavyweight and to grapple with a heavyweight. Oh, shit, yes. And it's a lot easier to stand up and strike well, th- than it is to get on the ground and well, try. Well, even, even at 205, throw a 205 in there because if yeah. you're 205, you're walking around at 225. Easy. I have tipped the scales at 225 and up. A number of different times. I am not even close to the height of these guys. You know, these guys are over six feet tall in light heavyweight. I'm, I was, I'm Unless you're a freak eight. of nature that just has unbelievable stamina. 
Yeah, it's very you're, difficult. You're, well, Stipe, Stipe can go all day, but you see him going on his feet all day. But my, my point is seeing the evolution there. I, I, I think you might be right there. But uh, if you are somebody who is walking around at 225 pounds, a ridiculous athlete with all that stamina and everything, you're not looking at MMA as your future. You're probably looking at basketball. You're probably looking at football. You're looking at one of these other professional sports that well, do so a shitload more money. Look at the guy that's playing for, plays for BC as a sophomore, hockey, who's now on the Olympic team, the U.S. men's Olympic team. He's uh, the first African American ever to play for the men's U.S. Olympic team. Oh yeah, okay. And he's the first college guy to play since the nineteen eighty Olympics. And he's just he's six five. He's two thirty. Jesus Christ. He's fast. He, he's an African American. I think the game is getting more diverse. Jordan Greenway. There's more sports to play. That's him. Lacrosse. Yeah. Soccer. Hockey. Six football. Four, two, three, basketball. Uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, yeah, but my, my um, point is if you're these big guys, you're not going to go play. Well, you're going to be pressured into playing. Wait, because you're going to go, you're going to get big money playing one of those bigger sports necessarily. When you're 170 pounds and walking around, the Minnesota Vikings and the Eagles and the Patriots, they're not knocking down your door when you're 170. When you're 170, you're Patriots running. Might be. They, have they, have a bunch of they do like little. little you're, you're 170 pounds. You kick ass in high school because in high school, more or less, you can still play. You know, you're playing football or whatever at that size. Talents all over the place. Right. It's a huge, huge spectrum. Go to college, you're not going anywhere. You're not going fucking anywhere. UFC looks damn good when you're that big and smaller. 45, 35, 25, 125 pounds? You kidding me? My dogs weigh 125 pounds. <laughs> my, my, my point being, is you're getting... I poop more than that. <laughs> I shit one... Tr no. Uh, you're getting a lot more people into the funnel of talent for mixed right. martial arts at the lower weights because there's nowhere to go. Where else are you going to go? Mm -hmm. you, you got nothing. The big boys... Look at the big... Okay, so think about the NFL right now. And, and I'll even throw the, the NBA there too. Think about the big 220s and up people in high, high, the highest level of talent. Like J.J. Uh, uh, Watt is somebody that people talk about all the time. Um, LeBron James is 260 pounds. Now, I'm not saying um, he comes in and fights, but imagine him as a prodigy. He's a ridiculous athlete. Six, six and a half feet tall, 265 pounds. Somebody with his athleticism. Six, six, I mean. I think he's six five or six six, one of the two. But imagine if he went into the uh, into UFC or people like that type with that skill skill set. That's a whole different level of athleticism than people are even even comparable to. There's nobody there that's got that type of athleticism. Uh, JJ Watt. I've heard a lot of different people talk about him. I mean, well, Marcus Allen. Didn't he try to? No, I was uh, shit. Uh, Georgia running back, um, Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker. He's a he's a freak. He's a phenom. He's a freak. Okay, JJ Watt, six foot five, two hundred and ninety pounds. He's two hundred and ninety pounds and he's fast as hell. He's fast as fuck. Imagine if he kind of he'd have to diet down a little bit, get down to two sixty. You wouldn't know what to do. I, okay, so instead of him at playing pop Warner football from the time he was a kid, he starts doing he's doing grappling. He's doing striking. He's doing boxing. He's doing jujitsu. He's wrestling in high school and college, and he comes in. And now, okay, JJ Watt's just the example. There's like, you know, there's 52 person roster in any every NFL team. There's maybe not as talented in football as JJ Watt, but there's a there are 20 people, 30 people, people right now that could go out there and do something. Oh shit, yeah, all the college football players that are doing this. They, that's where the talent pool is, where you need to draw them in. That's unbelievable, and there's that's why I don't think you see that type of athleticism. You you see somebody like J.J. Watt or LeBron James at heavyweight, you're going to see grappling. You're going to see explosiveness that you see people like um, Ben Henderson doing that Showtime kick off the cage. You see fucking LeBron James do a like spinning back fist but, jump twirl kick. 
or not. There's money in football. <laughs> oh, there's a shitload of money in football. That's why they don't go to the UFC. Well, but football's mainstream. Football's on TV. There is no pay-per-view football game. That's what I'm friggin' talking about. And there's it doesn't cost you five hundred five dollars to watch every Sunday. Or what? Five to eight hundred dollars to buy a ticket to go see a, a UFC no, fight. It does cost for a football game. Five hundred bucks for a ticket. It's probably two and change if Jesus you want to see friggin' Patriot bastards. Well, the Super Bowl, the cheapest was five grand. Well, that's Super Bowl. Though. I'm talking regular season. But nonetheless, you're right. There isn't pay per view. There isn't pay per view. It's that, mainstream. People can watch it. People can can go. I want to do that because I'm on TV. I want to be on the box of Wheaties. And that's dating myself. Nobody's <laughs> <laughs> on Wheaties anymore. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, you're you're right. That well, that gets back to our original point. The pay per views are out. They're outpriced. They're overpriced. The cards. It's not the cards that's the problem. It's the fact they're charging too much. They're doing too many too many of the pay per views. They should do more free shit. And I hate it when people complain about fight cards that are free. I hate that. Why would you complain exactly. about anything that's free? Exactly. It's like, you know, every time there's baseball games on, you telling me every freaking game is good? No, it's not. Not even the good games are good. It's fucking baseball. <laughs> Hasn't been good since steroids. Exactly. Ruined the damn game. They took it out. Yes. <laughs> I like the home run. No, it's freaking it's it's bullshit when people complain about it. The, granted, you may not know every one of the players. Stupid dog is so cute. <laughs> get get off me! All right, that's uh, enough. Was that to me or no? <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! Well, with that, that may be a great point to uh, to transition to being done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but no, I think I think we hit that one pretty hard there, but. I agree. It'll be interesting to see what the uh, WMG, CM, whatever, the people that bought the UFC, ah, yes. the new conglomerate, they bought it for a shitload of money. They had a very bad year in terms of how much revenue they made. Their pay-per-view buys, pay-per-view buys were down, which means the amount of money that they got off of pay-per-views was down. So now their first move that they do is they... Uh, Acknowledge the fact that hey, you know what, people, we're not getting as many people buying, yeah, but we'll just charge more. You also had how many times did Connor fight last year? I don't know if he fought once on the UFC. He fought. He fought. Um, that wasn't UFC. They didn't back that. They, yeah, they got a piece of it. Yes, they fought. He fought Floyd, but, but he did how much? Hundred million. Well, that Connor got. I don't know yeah. what the deal was. That's I don't know just what Connor got. Yeah, never yeah. mind what the card and yeah. what uh, Mayweather got. So when you have the draw. Rousey, Connor, um, Brock. Brock was a huge pay per view. You are paying Brock. an unbelievable amount to these top guys. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. You uh, you do pay a shit a shit ton of money. And so it? your 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 uh, revenue is going to go down. Well, he, they didn't pay. He didn't fight last year. Well, that's the big thing. That, that that's the big, he didn't fight. He he fought. You know the boxing match and all that shit. But um. The the big piece to it is you don't have them. How are you still going to get people to come and watch? It you know they they you know tweak the money thing too early. They they hit that too early. It's not a good move. But I guess we shall see what happens. Mm. All right. So you, what's what's next for you for your show for this for Dog Life? What's your next show? Do you have? Do you do I plan them out? Yes. Yes, I do. I plan them out. I've got a, I've got a handful of different people teed up for some interviews. I've got um, some personal trainers, online trainers um, on the East Coast. A guy who's down in North Carolina. We're nailing down a date that we can get together for that one. Um, I've got a reschedule with a, um, a fairly well-known commodity in the health and fitness world. She's actually, uh, she's a, a huge, huge celebrity. Um, we've had to reschedule the time for that one. Um, got a strong man out in Britain that I've been talking with. I would love to get him on the show. Um, and as always, I'll definitely be looking to pull from the uh, some past guests. I know um, one of my uh, my favorites was talking with Luigi out in Italy. The uh, he's a 
uh, Italian strongest man in uh, his weight category. I think it was around 170 pounds. Um, so th that's what we've got coming up. Uh, definitely need to expand more in the website space. We've got a website that kind of blows, but you know we need to do a little bit of work there. That's the that's the plan. That's that's where we're headed anyway. Onward and upward. Very good. There you go. All right. Thank you very much for asking. Thank you very much for joining us, Matt. Anytime. Well, uh, yeah, well, I, I love I love MMA. Sometimes I forget that when I um, focus a lot on fitness. So we'll definitely have you back maybe a bit later uh, as we get closer. The big cards, you know, they're going to do a huge card in July. So maybe we'll get a little closer to that. We'll talk a little bit more about that stuff and we'll maybe get into some fights. Right? Very cool. With that, good. peace. Before we 